For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. Okay. This is okay. one of them. Testing. Is that all right? Hello, and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Well, Carl, you are officially a published author, and and a copy will go in the British Library. Will it? Well, yeah. they have to take every rubbish. I think it will go in the British Library laboratory. <laughs> yeah. From what I understand, yeah. it will be in there yeah. uh, with like a collection of like novelty postcards <laughs> and yeah, maybe exactly. a viz compendium. But, you know. Yeah. So they have to. They take everything. Just think of that. But why do they do this? Why do they think they've got to keep everything? Because it's. We're living in a world now where everything is sort of binnable, and you know we, we use stuff binnable, uh, for, binnable. for what it is. Well, that, that, I no, think I think you could say that. Oh, that's binnable, fine. Yeah. That's fine. Um, there was a sort of poetry to it, but I think he stumbled across that. I don't think it was intentional. Yeah, I mean, I'm st I still haven't got over him saying foodage. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? That the, the world's changed. So why is that rule still hanging around? When well, it's not a rule. I mean, it's not a rule that you know the the country's going to you know live and die by it's just that it is seen as a, a, a repository for knowledge for information and i don't believe any old joe can wander in there and get one of these books i think you have to either be a scholar i think yeah. maybe it's open for a brief window for students but you know you can't you can just wander in there and see your own book Carl. you know there are some books that uh, they have to turn the page for you in gloves so your the amino acids i hate that with yours, it won't matter. They just go, it's over there, or they throw it to you. No, it's just... Or they slide, they slide it along the floor. Well, they say, well, I, I can't give it to you, Carl, because it's propping up this desk. <laughs> yeah. They kick it to you and say, put it in the bog when you're finished with it. Yeah. It's just that thing of being timed, though. I hate it when people go, oh, have you read this? And then you, I can't read it properly, because I'm thinking, they're thinking I'm taking ages here. Do you know what I mean? So I have to scan read it. And they go, oh, it's good, that. And they go, what do you think? And I go, about what? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd hate the fact that someone stood there with gloves on because that isn't normal relaxing sort of reading, is it? <laughs> but it's not, it's not, you don't go in to read the doomsday book, let's say, in order to just have a relaxing read. You're going in there to study there it, you know, to say they're professors and scholars and scientists and historians. They don't wander in because it's raining and they go, what's a good read? There's not a man wearing white gloves turning the pages of the latest Jackie Collins. <laughs> exactly. Do you have heat? What, watching I... your lips move as you read to see if you can turn the next page. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't really feel guilty because at the end of the day, right, I mean, people always rave about Shakespeare saying, oh, yeah, his mm. work was good. Mm. But Brilliant. at the same time... He'll probably put that on the book when he brings another one out. He'll put your review on it. Yeah. Well, that was good. Carl Pilkington. But at the same time, you know, like, some people will have a go. I'm ready for, for people having a go. Like that Wendy did about my little films are made. You know, their opinion. So yeah, you didn't actually him. slammed Carl. No, well, you know, each to their own and that. And, uh, you know, if everyone liked the same thing, I don't know what we'd do. Right? Sure. Um, you don't know anything. So, so all I'm saying is everybody raves about Shakespeare. Mm. When, if you properly looked at what he did, he invented a lot of swearing words, right? Effing and Jeffing and that. Now, if that if, was one of his. Well, it's Effing and Jeffing and Effing and Jeffing Part Two. But all I'm saying is, for some reason, when things are, are brought out years ago, um, people say they're good even though they're not. Is what I mean. When I was watching that documentary about the the real Indiana Jones, um, brilliant. They dug out um, some rocks with drawings on. And they were like, oh, don't damage them, don't, don't mark the paint. And, and it's like, it's rubbish. It was like a stick fella with a yak. <laughs> and, um, now, if that was found now, or if a kid brought, show me that, I'd go, hey, it's not that good. So what I mean is, because stuff's old, old stuff gets respect. But you're not judging it on its aesthetic merits, you're judging it on its historical importance. I don't think that's fair, though. Because when that, when that fella drew that, it wasn't old. He did it when he was knocking about. No, yes, but, but, you, but you, you must see the difference between you doing a, a stick man on a wall with a bit of chalk near your local and a, a cave painting that, 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 that they date to 10,000 years ago. 
Yeah, so in 10,000 years' time, when they find my story, will it gain more respect then than it is now? No, less. But why is it? Because I, I... Because people will more and more realise what a buffoon you are. <laughs> the more research we do, the more you expose yourself as an empty, egg-headed uh, moron. That's a friend speaking right there, Richard Gervais. <laughs> no, he loves I, you like a brother. <laughs> I'm just, I just think, you've mentioned him before, Steve, this Peeps fella. Yes. Has he done anything else apart from a diary? Because now I've done now I've done a book and a diary. That means you're better than Peeps, well, is what you're thinking, Well, isn't I'm it? not going to say that until I know, but what else did he do? Well, Peeps wasn't a writer predominantly. I right. believe he was, uh, you know, like a bureaucrat or something. But he kept a diary which has since become a historical landmark. And what did he say in it? Well, it's, again, more because it's both well-written and it's also an amazing insight a into... A social document as well. Document. Yeah, yeah. It's a social document. I mean, yours period. is a social document, but it, it sort of revolves around uh, having egg and chips in a cafe and seeing a ladybird, which you know. But that's that's today's living. That's well, his, just, his, his describes the Great Fire of London, which is what it's most. Yeah, it's but best if we hadn't had one of them, if we had one, I'd write it down. I'm only writing what's happening. He, he was just lucky. He was about in London when that happened. The thing is, if they read your diary, they'd think, well, nothing happened that year. Nothing important in the world happened that year. Because your diary doesn't just mention... I mean, OK, yes, it, does, it fails to mention any disasters in London because we haven't had any. It doesn't mention any world events. It doesn't men mention wars in Iraq, but it, terrorism. It doesn't mention now. anything. But that's all being wrote about anyway. If you're saying there's a museum that's keeping everything, there's loads of other books for that. Who's looking at the fella whose skulls fell off? What? We see. It's interesting, isn't it? A fella's skull has fell off. What do you mean, his skull has fell off? Something to do with circulation. But what do you mean his skull fell well, off? Well, it's in the diary. We but how can a diary. skull fall off? Because it's surrounded by tissue and it's got a brain. How can just his skull... How can it How can it detach itself from all the stuff surrounding no, it? He mislaid all his dreams. But, but, <laughs> but all I'm saying is that's, <sighs> that's not getting a look in. No, because it's not significant or probably true. Carl, you have the same concepts that you worked out and decided that were true at about ten, I think. I look at life like a... Like a Box big of chocolates? Book. Like a big book. <laughs> right, OK. Yeah. Right, and, you know, sometimes you get halfway through it and you go, even though I've been, you know, been enjoying it, I've had enough. And Give us another book. No, 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 no. Your metaphor, analogy, whatever you're, you're trying to create there, falls down with let's have another book. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you can either opt out of life or stick with it till the end. You can't go, ah, I'd be someone else now. You can't do that. I know you think you can. And I think in your world you can, you know, you possibly be injected into an old woman's head when you've had enough and you come out a little baby. What I mean is, at the moment, you know, my life... Uh, I'm going to live to 74, 75, okay. right? Okay. Right. So, yeah, I'm probably on page... What am I on? A, a book that's got about... <laughs> this is painful, Steve. This is really painful. Come on, sorry, I'm, carry I'm, on. I'm on... I say if my book's got uh, 300 pages in it... <laughs> yeah. If you, few pictures and that. <laughs> um, it's a picture book. That's the great thing about Carl's life. I, it's, it's a, a book for children. It's a, it's a pop-up book. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, every page he pops in, he goes, <laughs> I'm probably on, like, page about 170. Yeah. <laughs> so He's going to die at 74. Yeah. He's reading a book with a few pictures in with 300 pages and he's on 170. Go on then. So, right, if, if the book was too thick... Right, and there was loads more pages. Let me tell you, this book is way too thick. Yeah. <laughs> if the book was m more thick, yeah. <laughs> the book could not be thicker. If there was loads more pages left, I'd go, I can't be bothered reading on. Right. <laughs> OK, <laughs> no, let him finish the analogy. Must have known that when he saw the book. You don't... have got to finish this analogy, right. otherwise we're going to be here all Listen, night. Listen, he must have known how many pages there were when he got the book out of the library. Yeah, but the way they write books... <laughs> They're painting pictures more at the beginning. You're going, this is good. And then it, it gets a bit boring as it goes on, doesn't it? OK, well, that works. So you're saying that you, you no, were young... No, it doesn't work, because well, no, you just well, accepted that no. that's what all books are like. No, but there's a little bit of poetry in that, because he's, sort of, he's actually saying that you know, when he was young, his whole life was ahead of him, he couldn't wait the whole world, the promise that he was given of this world. And now he's, he's, he's a bit jaded and he's more cynical, and he realises that the world hasn't got a, as much to offer him as he thought it was. Is that what you meant? Yeah. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Actually, Carl, you like sayings, don't you? 
um, I've got a list here Sorry. of some of the, 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 the sayings and phrases that, that Shakespeare made up, really. Um, in a pickle was his. Yeah. Well, well, um, and we know what in a pickle yeah, means. Yeah, we know, we know what it means. I, 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 it's a saying I, I'd never use. Because when you're in a pickle, it's not something that you would say. No, if you're being sort of, if you're captured and you're being tortured for information, yeah. you wouldn't, and you, and you get access to a phone, you wouldn't call go, MI5, I'm in a pickle. Mm. You'd be screaming, going, You're taking my teeth, man. While you've been talking about that, I just was looking on the computer at uh, the Pun of the Day website. Uh, there's a couple that you might, you might like. There was a sign on the lawn at a drug rehab centre that said, keep off the grass. OK, OK, now if the pun is the lowest form of wit, and let's face it, sarcasm isn't, sarcasm is up there compared to the pun, then the drug pun, I think, is one of the lowest of the low. Oh, people who congratulate themselves on getting drug references, keep off the grass with. <laughs> grass, get it? Grass, you know, smoke in the grass, yeah. I think pun should be short for punch him in the mouth. <laughs> Idioms are better. Go on then, what's an idiom? Uh, Is that a new word you made up? No, I That's think Carl Pilkington's a complete idiom. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out what it was because I thought, oh, I like them, what are they? Right. And it's like little sayings. Yeah, that's right. That sums stuff up. Go on, give us an example of your favourite. Oh, can I just say one? Uh, 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 talking about sayings, Carl was getting fed up with summer. He was, uh, uh, he was fed up with not getting replies from something. He's, you know, he's having a hard time, you know. And uh, I went, oh, the worm has turned. He went, what? I went, the worm has turned. You know, you've... Stupid oh. saying, isn't it? No, t well, OK, tell him why you think that's a stupid saying. Because how do you know when a worm's turned? <laughs> <laughs> of right. all the creatures that you could flip over and know it's turned, why pick a worm? It's a bad... It's, a, it's, it's the worst thing they could have picked to express something turning. <laughs> but you're doing turning literally. This means changing, doesn't it? Changing your attitude. A new broom, turning over a new leaf. Yeah, but, but Things are going to be different now, and I'm sick of it. Chameleon. No, but Chameleon is a brilliant thing to use for something to change. Oh. Chuck that in the sentence. There's, there's, there's nothing that you can link a worm to human life to. You're talking about something that's... It's blind, isn't it? It's blind, <laughs> it's deaf. Gay. It's got no features. <laughs> Why is he having such a go at a worm? Just because it's it's a weird thing to use. Something that its arse is more it does more than its head. <laughs> <laughs> that could be said of you, Carl, to be fair. Oh, Jim Pants is that? He's gone and written it down again. <laughs> Just reading excerpts of Carl's diary. Went home and looked up Freud on the internet. Didn't find him that interesting, so looked at some other philosophers instead. Socrates, Aristotle, Lao Tzu from years ago came up with some good stuff. One, he know he who knows does not speak. He who speaks does not know. Not entirely true. To lead people, walk behind them. Yeah. And of course, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah. Did, did that. Maybe this is why people are at the start line spectating at the Commonwealth Games. Well, I, no, it's just that I, I've never understood why in Olympics and stuff like that. If you're going to watch, don't stand around the start line. Go to the end where you see the winner. But because of that saying, it actually makes sense. I mean, it's like, well, every step starts with a step or whatever. Say uh, again? Uh, every race, you know, you've got to start with a, with, with a step. Yeah. If you want to stay at the start line, do. What does that mean? I'm just saying, if if you're into, ra I'm not. I wouldn't watch a race, right? Okay. But all I'm saying is, right. If I was to watch a race, yeah, I wouldn't hang about the start line because. Well, you just said you would. What did I? Yeah, you said that's the place to start because every every race starts with a step. <laughs> no, but I wouldn't normally. When I was on holiday, yeah, Suzanne said there's a race going on down the road. Yeah, I'd go. Well, let's go. Keep going down the road and stand at the finish line. Okay, but, but now what have you thought? Lazo, yeah, I'd say, well, hang on a minute. Every race starts with a single step. Yeah. How many people around the start line? Is there more room there? She goes, yeah. I'll go. Let's go there then. It's less busy. Right, and what would you see there, then? I'd see people starting the race, but I wouldn't be that impressed with them, because I'd go, well, I don't know if any of these are any good. So would you start at the start or the end, then? I, I, if it was down to me, I, I'd just probably stay at the finish line. OK, so you wouldn't want to see the first step, then? 
So Not what do you really. think of Lazoo now then? Uh, I preferred the leading people from behind. Okay, and what would you do to lead someone now then? Um, well, if you're behind, you don't have to take responsibility, do you? You can go, well, I didn't say anyway, you went there. That's not really leading them, though, is it? Yeah, because I've made them think. I've gone, uh, they go, oh, I've just walked into a big hole. I'd go, oh, should have been looking where you're going. <laughs> I haven't led them in that hole, but they've learned a lesson. They won't go in a hole again. <laughs> Socrates, that was incredible. That that was incredible, Carl. One of the key catchphrases, if you like, from the war, Carl, was of course, "Keep the home fires burning." Is that like saying you're away, but don't worry when you come home, the house is warm? <laughs> Pretty much, sort of. Yeah. Don't forget where you're from. We're, we're remembering we're you, waiting for you. Yeah. Again, it doesn't say what it means. So there's you, you know, risking your life and you're getting a letter from home saying we've got the heating on. <laughs> Again, working hard, paying the bills, they've got the heating blaring. <laughs> Put your coat on. Start panicking, we're keeping the on fires burning. What? I didn't know, what do you mean, what fire? When we had that in? I thought we had central heating. <laughs> who's, who's she got in? Who's this bloke who's moved in, changed the heating system? <laughs> It's all, it's all extra hassle. Do you know, d yeah, it's, this is why it's best not hearing from people. Go I've, on. I was Brilliant. in the jungle, wasn't I? Yeah. Right? For this programme. So uh, just, it should explain that um, Carl wasn't on manoeuvres. We sent Carl around the world for a programme. Um, and, uh, yeah. Um, well, hang on, though. I want to hear about the fact he was in the jungle and he, he didn't want to hear anything from home because... No. On a lot of the trips, I had a phone now and again so I could call Suzanne. When I was in the jungle, I was out of contact for like five days. Nothing. Didn't know what was going on where. Right? Right. I get out of the jungle. I call Suzanne up. Everything all right? Yeah. What bills have we got? Um, and then I said, how, you know, how was it? And she said, it was reassuring. You know, it was all right. And it's reassuring that if you died, it'd be all right. What? That was from Suzanne. What do you mean? What because she sort of... She, it was like I was dead for five days. She said things weren't that bad. I still got stuff sorted out. It's reassuring. She said what? She said... You called her up after five days of being in the jungle, eating grubs and having things tried to climb up your knob. Yeah, yeah surviving. Right. There's me, the first phone call I get. I put the phone on. I'm going to call Suzanne, let her know I'm all right. Sorry, you could get the phone calls in the jungle, but you didn't want it. What do you mean you turned the phone on? I thought you meant you were out. No, it was off because there's no signal. You mean oh, you got out of the jungle? You you got, you got, out, of the got out of the jungle, right. put the phone on. Yeah. Thinking, right, I'll call Suzanne, let her know I'm all right. I've been to Ellen back here. Mm. Call her up, everything all right. Uh, you know, what's it been like? Not, not. To, I said, it, that's the longest we've ever gone, isn't it? I don't think I've ever gone 24 hours without talking to her for 17 years. Yeah. Suddenly, there's a week when I'm not talking to her. Yeah. She goes, yeah, it started off weird, but it's reassuring that if you were dead, I can handle it. But she said, I sorted everything out still. I could handle it if you now, weren't what, Now, what offended you most? Um, the well, just the like fact that you did... That, that, uh, you want her to be dependent on you, or the fact that you realise you make no difference <laughs> at all in her life. Well, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? They forget, don't they? The bills weren't as piling up as, as much as they normally do. That's the only thing they ever get through the door. You know, when there's a postal strike, carry on. I'm not interested. You're only bringing bills to the door anyway. Carry on striking. There wasn't that much post. There wasn't that many bills to sort out. There wasn't problems with the boiler. She's forgetting all this. So right. I'd like to go back in the jungle, yeah. just as the boiler's sort of, the flame starts to flicker, yeah. and I'm about to go out. Let's see you then. That's what I'd say to any soldiers listening to this before yeah. you leave home. Yeah. So just leave everything. Break a few things, uh, don't pay the bills, and then go. And yeah. they'll miss you more. Yeah. Well, they'll that's great advice to people overseas. Uh, <laughs> let me just reiterate that. Um, uh, <laughs> next time, when you come home, have a great time uh, with your wife and kids. Uh, see, you, see your mum and dad, what your family. Um, but then, when you've just got to go back into active service, just uh, smash the place and do shit everywhere. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Carl, what's your thoughts on poetry? I've never really been a, a fan of it. This is a surprise. It's sold in a bad light. It's a bit sort of a bit gay, isn't it?
I mean, okay. it depends what sort you're talking about, because maybe there's poetry out there that I haven't heard. There's some poetry gayer than others. Yeah. War poetry can't be gay, can it? That was people. I haven't heard. Go on. People fighting in the trenches and can't be gay. They weren't gay. They were they were writing to their sweetheart. I, I don't know his name. It might might be a bloke. I don't know. But so is, was it was it a sort of a what sort of poem was it? Was it a sort of a limerick sort of a like no? It was light? it was uh, well. There's, there's there's famous ones, Wilfred Owen and Secret Sassoon, and they're very moving. They're about uh, you know the, 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 what usually happens is that they talk about why are we here? This is you know we've been we've been sold a, a lie here, you know, and they really started seeing war in a different light from 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 their point of view, in the trenches. Famously, some of them died so, soon after, the, you know... But I prefer a, the proper, a proper letter. No sort of crypticness. That's the problem with right. poems. OK, you so you'd, be, you'd have been disappointed to get Dolce at Decorum S through the post, would you? You'd have just said, what are you trying to say, mate? Is, what's the weather like when you're coming home? Did you get my socks? Well, yeah, sometimes life is a bit like that, and it? It's like, say what you mean. Right. Well, that's the, well. Then that the, you have just wiped all art off the face of the earth. If you literally just say what you mean. No, I'm just saying in a letter. Say if I say if I was a woman and my fella was fighting in a war. Right. What's your fella's name? The, Harry. Okay. So Harry. Oh, no, no, it's right. So when were you married? Uh, about 19, uh, 1935. 1935, so uh, you've been married about four years. Yeah. Harry, why don't, you, why don't you go off? Oh, you're a woman, aren't you? Yeah. you don't OK, so what, what, what did you see in Harry? What, what, what did you, why did you like Harry? Was he...? He just was, like, funny. Uh, butch. He wasn't that butch, but that no. didn't matter back then, did it, in the war? No. And you, and you took everyone. But what did you say when Harry was say, what said to you...? Well, I, I, I thought it was coming, because a lot of, uh, a lot of our friends right. ended up having Did you just hug him and say, don't go, or something? There's no point, because that would have just made it tough for him. So, <laughs> what's the point? Just go with it. But if he I had cried after he went, he cried after he went. That's what you do, isn't it? You wouldn't do it in front of him. He's got to, he's got to go to battle. Okay, so your man goes off to battle. Right. Then I get a, a letter from the colonel right. saying, "Oh, bit of bad news. Harry's dead." Now I get a letter in the post. He said he said what he meant, didn't he? In the well, yeah, and they would do, wouldn't they? They wouldn't yeah. funny around saying, "Oh, he was he was on the warpath and the cloud, the cloud went dark." I go, well, what, "What? Just tell me what happened. I don't want a weather forecast." He got shot at the arse and the bullet came out his head. Right now, the colonel he, he would just tell me the basics. Now, because he sent his by um, telegram, telegram, telegram. They sent a telegram. Mm. The letter I get from Harry has been stamped, so I get it late. Oh, right? okay. So I get a letter. From uh, from Harry, after he's died. Yeah. Right, and you know he's dead. I know he's dead, so I get right. this letter with his handwriting on. I'm yeah. devastated because I was just getting over his death. Yeah, it's all brought back to me when this letter drops through the post. Well, yeah, three right. days and you're pretty much over it. It's Harry's yeah. handwriting. Yeah. Oh God, what's this? What's now, I written? open it. Yeah. And instead of saying things are bad here, socks are damp, uh, you know, everything's grim, it's cold, I'm sick of it. There's a poem. It wouldn't feel like it was from Harry. Well, what, because it's Harry... not in his words. Poems are never in the in the person's words. But did you know Harry was a poet when you married him and made love to him? No, I picked it up because all the people were doing it. Something to do in the trenches. But when he carried you over the threshold, Carl, and he, he laid you down and gently kissed you, didn't he? Didn't he say any? Didn't he ever? So he, he must have whispered some sweet nothings into no, your hysterical like red hair. He no, like that, straight no. to the point. He was like, get your knickers off. <laughs> I've ever heard! I can't fucking... What the 